Hello, my name is Michael, and today we will be discussing the cause and effect of media violence. Data shows that large amounts of exposure to violent media will cause a negative effect on children and teens. Let's start by learning about the cause of this negative effect. First up today, are kids who play violent video games and watch other violent content more likely to be aggressive? Some Eric experts say yes, and I will tell you most parents worry about it. Absolutely. Dr. Melissa Westendorf wrote a book called Unplugged. She's also the co-founder of the Technology Wellness Center, which is dedicated to this type of research and support for families. And she's got some answers. So I think this is a big... Hey. Issue. Good morning to you. Good that morning. people are worried about. They want you, to know. I know you right. got that thing going on with I'm your voice. I'm a little froggy. It's, oh, you are. It's the season. <laughs> it yeah. is the season. Kissing too many puppy noses. Yeah. There you sick. go. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but we hear a lot of times we hear conflicting information. You know, uh, we'll hear in the media that it doesn't lead to aggressive thinking or behavior, and then other people will say it does. But really, the research is pretty well established. Really? That there is an association. Um, there's specific factors that are related to increased aggression or risk for aggression in kids, and media violence is one of them. Well, and what do you mean by media violence? Here's some known factors, right? These are what? Right. So these are the known factors in the study um, that I'm talking about today that are found to be related to aggression. Um, increased aggression. So uh, negative aggressive thinking and decrease in empathy. Oh, actually. So that peer delinquency, media violence, peer victimization, gender, neighborhood crime, and abusive parenting. Why gender? What does that mean? Um, male versus oh, female. Male versus so female. Okay. a higher risk for males, actually. What is, how do you define media violence? Because, you know, a lot of us will think, well, is sometimes just, you know, watching a, a violent news story scary enough for a child? Right. So what this was looking at in terms of media violence was video games, movies, and television programming. Great. And probably... You know, now you would include YouTube, the, you know, some of the mm -hmm. violent information we get from YouTube as well. So any media violence such as that is what's included in the study. Uh in our morning rounds, video games and your kids, 97% of teenagers and preteens say they play them. About a third admit at least one of their favorite favorites is rated mature or adults only often because of the violent content. Okay. Well, a new study finds a link between violent games and aggressive behavior in children. Dr. Harold Koplowitz is a child psychiatrist and president of the Child Mind Institute and joins us at the table. Hello, Harold Koplowitz. Good morning. Seems like we have been hearing about this information for years, that there's a correlation. What makes this study different and so important to you? I think it's a, it's a very good study in the respect it's a large sample. There are over 3,000 kids who were interviewed for the study over two years, and they were interviewed three times about how often they play games, what kind of games they're playing, and what kind of effect it has on them. It has one limitation that we should, be no that we should note, mm -hmm. is that they only are relying on self-report. That means the kids are giving us the information. We're not getting information from teachers or from parents. But the kids are telling us that the longer they play and the more they play aggressive games, they start thinking in an aggressive way and they have more aggressive <laughs> attitudes. That's not so what did you learn from the video clips? Even though some people state violent media does not harm children, there is too much data showing that is that is that does harm children. Today's children have unlimited access to media outlets, and this has a very negative effect on their social and emotional development. Let's look at the effects of this harm. <laughs> One morning last September, in the early hours, police were called to a Canberra skate park after reports of a stabbing. They found two young men with serious injuries. One, an 18-year-old, died at the scene. At least a dozen teenagers were involved in the brawl, and it all started online. Increasingly what we're seeing is that groups of people, including teens, are meeting online, through social media or on chats, a conflict might arise, it escalates very quickly because it's all via text. And then when face-to-face -face contact happens, um, that humanizing factor or that disinhibition um, effect that has allowed that escalation to happen online doesn't necessarily dissipate. So they're meeting face-to-face -face at a high level of tension. 
And, um, you know, this is the worst case scenario in terms of what happened in Canberra. Certainly. Social media is a powerful tool local law enforcement uses to help crack down on crime. It can also be a gateway for teen violence. According to News for Jack's crime and safety analyst Gil Smith, violence is definitely stemming from places like Facebook and Twitter. And we've seen four shootings in the Jacksonville area in just the past four days. The majority of the victims have been young people. A 16-year-old girl shot in the leg at Bruce Park last night. Friday, 18-year-old Jaquan Reeves was shot and killed at Sheffield Park during a gathering. A 19-year-old male also shot and is recovering. And before that, Thursday, a 16-year-old male is suspected of firing shots at a school bus near 118th Street on the west side and injuring two teenage girls riding that bus. JSO believes at least one of these shootings are gang-related. A News for Jack's viewer sent us this graphic, still, still frame, of posts on social media in reference to the shooting death of one of those teens killed. We had to blur parts of it because of the language. Channel 4's Heather Lee spoke with Gil Smith about the problem. Heather? Well, Kent Smith says obviously crime can stem from just about anything, but social media is definitely contributing to the problem. He says parents need to step in in order to curb this disturbing trend. I have one more clip that shows what parents can do. But I also pose the question to you. What can you do to make sure children are less exposed to violent media? The numbers and studies don't lie. This context, context is hurting, is harming our children. We looked at adolescents and the average age was 21. So they had adolescents up to young adults. Wow. So that was the age span. I mean, you think that's when they can handle it. You know, yeah, like a, oh, a right. video game or something. Right. Oh, they're playing with their buddies, whatever. Yeah. They're fine. They're old enough. Right. No. But if you remember in um, other segments, I've talked about the brain doesn't really, you know, isn't completely developed till 25, right? And that's Great your decision-making part of your brain that finishes up there. So wow. what can we do? Know their friends, check the ratings, guidelines, right. use the par parental controls. That's one thing we have to all educate ourselves about. Right. That's not something that comes natural and be mindful of pre-existing conditions, probably like hyperactivity. Right. So <laughs> if you have a child who has ADHD or is prone to tantrums, mm. uh, then it's probably not wise to let them look at the violent media, you know, really follow those gu guidelines. They're